third problem. And it looks intimidating, but it's actually not that hard. First, we see that plus sign in the integrand, so we know we can split it into two integrals. Moreover, we know that once we do that, uh, we can use exponent rules here and exponent rules on that part, right? So if we do both, then we can rewrite the integral to read like this, uh, which is uh, using exponent rules here in the first part, we could write e to the x times e to the e to the x times dx, right? Okay, cool. And then plus the second integral can be written as um, e to the x divided by e to the e to the x times dx, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. And let's call this first integral a and this second integral b. And once we find them, we could add the results. So first for a, uh, again, we're going to think u substitution, right? Okay, so if we let u equal e to the x, then du is from which we gather that du over e to the x is equal to dx. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So that means that a is equal to integral. We leave this e to the x alone, so we get e to the x times e to the u, and then dx is du over e to the x, so we go uh, du over e to the x like this, right? And now we could do this, and then slide. No, just kidding, by that I mean rewrite. <laughs> A equals that, right? Okay, cool, cool. And what's uh, the integral of e to the u du? It's just uh, e to the u plus let's say constant one. And I say constant one because I anticipate another constant from this integral, right? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now calling back what u was, our final answer for A is going to be e to the e to the x plus c1. Yeah? Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now for b, for b, um, well, we're not ready to write b equals yet. But yeah, we look at this, and again, we're going to think u substitution. And it is u substitution, but let's use the letter v. And what's v going to be? Well, v is going to be equal to, uh, it's going to be equal to e to the x, right? Surprise, surprise, uh, this e to the x specifically. And so then dv uh, is going to equal, dv is going to equal uh, e to the x dx. And so, um, dv over e to the x is equal to dx and we go oh yeah b is equal to the integral we leave this guy alone right e to the x because this is our v right and we go e to the v times in place of dx we have dv over e to the x so dv over e to the x that's a lot of e to the x's um okay <laughs> all right and then <laughs> This is the convenience this time, right? And of course, we could write the dv right here. But wait, we know we can use exponent rules in the integrand here and write it as e to the negative v dv, right? Okay, but wait, but wait, what's the antiderivative of e to the negative v dv? Uh, it's going to be negative e to the negative v and then plus c2 this time, right? c2. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Now, what's v? v is e to the x, so our final answer is actually e to the, well, no, I have this negative, right? It's negative e to the negative e to the x plus c2. So since we have to add the two results, uh, if we combine c1 and c2, c1 and c2 into some constant c, our final answer is going to be um, our final answer is going to say that a plus b is equal to it's equal to what was a a was e to the e to the x plus c1 so as i said we're going to combine c1 and c2 so plus and then this but wait this leads with a minus so actually minus e to the uh, e to the um and then it's going to be minus e to the x plus c where again uh c is equal to c1 plus c2 yeah okay cool this is it for uh, problem three